Hey everybody, Tony D. Little Jones asleep on the couch and she's being a bit of a pill, so I'm gonna let her <laughs> let her sleep. Um, this is a hot take on the defund the police movement in Minneapolis. Uh, also covered today spectacularly by the Lotus Eaters. Uh, you should definitely check them out. The guys were laughing throughout uh, articles like this, and it is hilarious to watch uh, the people who the leftists fail in Minneapolis so incredibly. Um, but this is from the Gateway Pundit. Defund the police movement spectacularly fails Minneapolis to spend $6.4 million hiring more cops. In an astonishing defeat for the defund the police movement, the city of Minneapolis is set to spend $6.4 million hiring dozens of more police officers. Activists and far-left politicians in the city have been pushing to defund the department since the death of George Floyd, which sparked riots and terror across the nation. From ABC News, the city council voted unanimously Friday to approve the additional funding of the police requested, which is, a, which is funny because they voted unanimously to defund the police. The department says it only has 638 officers available to work, roughly 200 fewer than usual. Yeah, about 200 quit. <laughs> and the rest are, you know, half of them are on extended leave. They have the blue flu. Um, an unprecedented number of officers quit or went on extended medical leave after Floyd's death and the unrest that followed, which included the burning of a police precinct. Yeah, why? Look, I'm a libertarian, and libertarians are all about uh, the Constitution. The cops have too much power to ignore the Constitution and your rights. That's a problem. But the solution is not to completely eliminate the cops because when you do, someone fills that power vacuum. Whether it's local people starting a city militia just to keep order or a local drug kingpin uh, decides to impose order simply because he wants to make the most money possible. It's one way or another. So, you need, if you don't have cops, you need something. You need security. If you open a nightclub, you need security. If you open a bar, you probably need a bouncer. If you have a city or a, a, a even just like back in tribal days, you would need security. The, the, the warriors would provide security for the rest of the tribe. So you need something. Now you can argue over what those officers can and cannot do. But the idiots in Minneapolis, well, they wanted to replace them with, uh, what was it? They were proposed replacing the police department with a public safety office. Yeah, a bunch of people who had no training in law enforcement <laughs> and would basically be social workers. Which, you know, social workers are needed, you know, in and around police officers because they deal with dysfunctional people all the time. And it would be great to have a few, you know, on staff but you can't replace them because what do you do if the social worker goes to the house and the guy has a gun well then you got to arm either arm the social worker or send the guy who's going to basically be a cop with the social worker and then you have a situation where the social worker worker is in danger and the cop has to save them um you have to make up your mind what kind of society you want and it you know Crime exploded in Minneapolis after they defunded the cops because, as they said on the Lotus Eaters, you basically told all the criminals, hey, you can do whatever you want. Um, and there's a lot of crimes you can't solve with social workers. Guys who steal cars and sell them to make money uh, probably aren't going to respond well to social workers. They'll tell them what they want to hear, and then they'll be out stealing cars and you know 10 minutes later because they're criminals you know they're not they may or may not be dysfunctional but they're criminals i mean people have met criminals I, I, I but i think the people who are in these high and mighty positions in minneapolis have never met criminals not real criminals maybe they met some white collar criminals but they haven't met criminals like people who live on the uh, edge of society and just steal <laughs> and scam for a living. A lot of them are total scumbags, but they're not mentally ill. It's the life they've chosen for various reasons. Um, you know, some of them are mentally ill, certainly. Certainly the violent, more violent ones are, but some of them, that's just what they chose to do. It's fun for them. 
you know, when they're young, it's very cheeky and fun and they get away with a lot of it until eh, it eventually catches up to them and then they don't know anything else. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do when you're ex-con, you've been a two-time loser and you you get, you get you can't get a job? You you pull a heist. <laughs> you rob somebody. You do a scam. You do a scheme. Stuff you can't get caught on to survive. That's what people do. No amount of counseling is going to help them. <laughs> um, you know, if you send them to jail, eventually they get the message, man, I, I, I got to get something. I got to get something. I'm going to actually have to work. And a lot of them, when they get older, they do work. They do eventually give it up and they become they get the lowest possible paid job and that's what they do. Because, you know, that's all they can get, but at least they kind of build their life from there. So, uh, it, it's just funny that, you know, everybody said the same thing when this came out, except, you know, people who are on the left. Defunding the police completely is a dumb, dumb move. Now, some police departments are overfunded, that's true, or they waste money, that's totally true. You know, when they were giving, back during the Bush era, cops bazookas and helicopters for small town cops and tanks, no, we don't, we don't want the cops to have that kind of hardware. Uh, in most 99% of the case. But, um, you know, we need cops. You need to call somebody if you live in a neighborhood when you're fighting with your neighbor over, you know, noise or whatever. I mean, if you can't resolve it yourself. Now, as a libertarian, I would say, do not call the cops unless it's an absolute last resort, especially these days. You know, if you have a dispute with your neighbor, try to work it out on on your terms because once you bring the cops in then it becomes a little uh, becomes a lot tougher sometimes you know same thing with george floyd like you know a restaurant owner probably would have been better off just helping george out of the out of the place or writing off a sandwich and just saying don't ever come back here but they called the cops and what are you going to do he didn't know it was going to happen he just thought the cops would solve his problems. And that's another thing, too. People put way too much expectations on the cops. They're only human. They're not magic men who are instantly uh, great at arbitrary, uh, arbitrating uh, uh, disputes. Some of them are terrible at it. <laughs> Some of them just don't want to do it. It's BS, and they get, they get annoyed, and they just decide, ah, I'm going to arrest everybody. So, you know, don't call the cops unless you absolutely have to. And in terms of voting uh, about the cops, I think the problem with the cops is they have too much power. The police unions have too much power. If you took that power away from them and scaled them back, then they would be more careful. You also don't want them to enforce so many laws. We have too many laws on the books. So you legalize drugs and prostitution, for instance. That wipes all those crimes off the books. They don't have to enforce them. They can concentrate on violent criminals, which is what we all want. Nobody wants to be assaulted or murdered. So we want the cops on that, number one. You know, go after illegal weapons. Go after people who are violent. Yes, that's what we want. Everything else, you know, and then we also like people who rob you. We'd like them addressed at some point. You know, when you, your house gets robbed or your car gets robbed, and you got to fill out a police report, you know, people ask the inevitable question, oh, when might I get my stuff back? And the cops look at you like you're nuts. This is the last time they're ever going to be talking to you about this subject, ever. Unless they come robbing your house the next day, which they probably won't. They rob you, and that's it. You lose your stuff, and you'll probably never get it back. Because the cops aren't even looking for it. You know, when they finally find some big heist operation and it's full of people's stuff, they usually end up just uh, auctioning it all off for charity or the cops. They don't hunt down every person. Who the hell writes down the serial numbers of all their belongings? There's no way to find people. So, anyhow, uh, I told you. I told you, you idiots in Minneapolis. And now, hopefully, you'll rebuild your city. But if you live in Minneapolis, you're a fool to vote for anyone who's even tangentially involved. You have to get rid of Democrats. You have to get rid of them. Give it up. 
The Democratic Party, especially in a place like Minneapolis, is deeply corrupt and broken. You need to vote them out so they'll reform. It's the only way they're going to reform and then come back and, and act relatively normal. You cannot hold on to this trope like, Ooh, Republicans, they're only for big business. They'll hurt us. What are the Democrats doing? They're defunding the police. They've destroyed your city. Don't vote for them. It doesn't matter what they promise you. Politicians will promise anything to get elected. Learn your lesson. Don't vote Democrat.